Hi, I'm Mike Payne from Christian Voice New Zealand. I want to describe somebody that I know. This person refuses to admit guilt or wrongdoing unless it's a temporary admission to gain favour. They want to take credit for everything but use others to accomplish their agenda. They'll withhold information. They'll lie. They'll not even tell the whole truth. They ignore people who disagree with them, fail to give credit or show gratitude. They want to control everything and criticise those with an alternate point of view. They must have the limelight as they want to be the centre of attention. They sow the seeds of discord by belittling and minimising others or the value of others. They attempt to deflect their attributes to another person. They're quick to shut down further debate by belittling people or just by leaving the room. They refuse to express an opinion for fear of disapproval. They're a strong-willed person who wants what they want when they want it. And they'll only fraternise with those who serve their agenda. And last of all, they'll hide when the going gets tough. Does this sound like somebody familiar? Well, it should resonate. But would you be able to live or even work alongside someone like that? You know, in the Bible, there's an account of a queen, Queen Jezebel. She was exactly as we described, but not at first, because everybody loved her. Unfortunately, this affair didn't continue. As she lied, manipulated, controlled, and divided the population she ruled over. For Christians, the spirit of Jezebel is one that should be avoided. Popularity does some strange things to people where they set themselves aside and they develop a Jezebel spirit, either wittingly or unwittingly. I think a modern day term, narcissist, is perhaps the closest thing that we can get to describing the Jezebel spirit. It is these traits which make me believe New Zealand is being led by a leader who has that same spirit shown by Queen Jezebel. Without a doubt, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is this country's most charismatic politician that we've ever seen. Abroad and at home, Jacinda mania became the thing. Over the past 18 months, perhaps longer, Ardern has gone from the giddy heights of popularity to being threatened and despised by some who are on the fringes of our society. Because I want to believe there is good in every person, I want to believe that when Jacinda Ardern entered Parliament, eventually becoming Prime Minister, Prime Minister her intentions were honourable. But more and more, we're seeing what really lies in the heart of our current leader. We see a leader who wants to orchestrate and control everything around her. She uses deception and she manipulates the masses to get what she wants. It's been said that she wants to be the centre of attention all the time. You know what? I'm not going to argue with that. She's created fear, doubts and anxiety within the population. She's been disruptive and divisive in people's lives. She has, by way of lockdowns and vaccine passports, disrupted believers from worshipping God. She has allowed and promoted the abolition of accountability in society and for moral values. She's encouraged Kiwis to knock on their neighbours, prevented Kiwis to seek the sanctity of family and country with closed borders. She's denied grieving relatives access to dying family members' bedsides, forcing them to share their loved ones' last moments via a Zoom video call. Imagine that. And she's, wreaked, and she's wreaked havoc among marriages, friendships, groups, companies, relationships and institutions. All of this with the mantra, be kind and being a team of five million. But now this most loved politician is experiencing the truth and the saying a day in politics is a long time. Now I openly admit, I'm not a fan. I didn't vote for the Labour Party, their policies, their philosophy, nor their leader. But having said that, I accept and respect Ardern's position as the leader of this country. But like many, I'm opposed to many of the policies which have been legislated and now enshrined as law. I'm opposed to so many future actions this government wants to take regarding land, water, health, education, and you know what, that list is endless. All that said, I'm appalled by the two-tier system this government encourages, which pits New Zealanders against one another. It's not just the vaccine mandate, it's townies versus farmers. It's Māori against Pākehā. It's local government against central government. It's one sex against another. It's rich versus poor. It's the healthy versus sick. My friends, this is not the New Zealand we once loved. It's not a country or society that I personally want to be part of.
The tensions of this division will rise to a point like it's happening overseas, and that is the reason that I fear for this country. You know, New Zealanders have experienced division in this country when the country erupted because of a rugby tour back in 1981. I believe the violence and pressure on families, friendship and the nation will pale to the way the population would express their outrage today. This and future governments need to take some time out and have a cup of tea and consider where New Zealand needs to go in the future before it becomes too late. When the nation turned on Jezebel, it wasn't pretty. The Bible account says that she was thrown from a high place and a body left to the dogs. The warning is there for Jacinda Ardern, who has experienced the dizzying heights of popularity if she continues to show this narcissistic or Jezebel spirit in her leadership. Then a fall from grace will come from lofty heights and it will be spectacular. Then watch the media go into a frenzy like ravenous dogs and feed on the Ardern legacy. And what will that legacy be? It won't be the nuclear moment for this generation, as she has spelled, but a nation divided, morally bankrupt, and economically broke. Thank you for watching. Help us to spread this message by sharing it within your own network. If you want to see more messages like this one, simply hit the subscribe button. For more information about our work, or if you're moved to donate the price of a cup of coffee, jump online to our website, christianvoicenewzealand.com.